What's up beautiful people, this is Mike from iGetsful and hope you are having an amazing day. Today's video is the part 2 of the LG OLED C1 and G1 tips and tricks. I have the part 1 listed in the description. You want to check that out because there's so many amazing tips and tricks that I shared with you guys and you guys showered a lot of love on that video. So this is the part 2. As soon as I discovered more tips and tricks, I compiled them in one video and I'm sharing with you. Make sure to hit a like and subscribe on the channel and I have the winner's announcement for the giveaway that I did, Victor, Brad and Joel, congratulations, you guys won the fiber optical HDMI cables, 10 meter, 15 meter and 20 meter worth at least $100. So thank you so much guys for participating. Now, without any delay, let's just get into our first tips and tricks of the day. So first one that we're going to talk about is related to the remote control function, which I find fascinating and is amazing for your connected devices to your LG OLED C1 and G1. So in my case, I have the Apple TV 4K connected to the LG OLED G1, and I'm gonna press this these three dots here. And you will see another hidden feature that's gonna show up on the TV screen, and that's a virtual remote control that will show up. So I can have only play and pause button right now, home and menu, so I can press home button there virtually, and it will take me all the way back to the home screen on the Apple TV. Now you can use this example for, let's say you have a 4K Blu-ray player connected. You can use it for menu, disk menu and all that. You don't even need to use your 4K Blu-ray player remote control because now you have a virtual remote control. And also it will show you the more information about the connected HDMI, whether what kind of output you're getting. In my case, I was getting the 4K and it is Apple TV 4K. So it is an amazing feature. You can also get the TV information by waving the remote control around and you will have the HDMI pop-up showing. So let's say you wave the remote control and you have that. Now let's talk about the second tip and trick which is for the LG logo. You saw when I was turning off the TV. So my TV turned off with that LG logo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it off. So we're gonna turn on the TV and we're gonna spam that mute button on the remote control. So you're gonna have to press it a couple of times and you're gonna have that menu popping up which says out of power sync, LG, uh, show LG logo when turning off. So we're gonna turn off that option. And with that, now if you turn off the TV, it's just gonna be blank screen and your TV is gonna be turned off. So this is for some people who don't want their life's good logo on the screen which is kind of like really big logo on the screen and we never had it before in the LG OLED C up to C10. We haven't had that. So now if you want to turn that back on, you like LG's life's good, you can spam that um, mute button a couple of times, maybe like four or five times I think you have to press and you have this menu showing up and you can enable that again. So now your life is good. All right guys, so now let's talk about the third tip of the day. So we're gonna go to the all settings and I'm gonna show you what you can do to know how much of the battery you have left in your remote control. So you're gonna go to the settings, you're gonna go to support section and then you're gonna go down to quick help. And in that section, you will have an option in the check item section. So you're gonna go to the check items and you're gonna go to the check status of the TV. So you're gonna go to the check magic remote control and there it will show you if you have sufficient battery for your remote control or not because you know sometimes your remote just dies on you now you're looking in the dark somewhere that whether you have the batteries double a batteries or not so this option will give you the idea whether the battery is enough or not if it's not then you can go and buy one right okay now we're going to talk about when you shake the remote control on the screen you know that um, sometimes the cursor doesn't show up and you, what you can do is you can deregister the remote control by pressing and holding the home button and the back button. What it will do is it will deregister your remote control or kind of unsync or I don't know what exactly word to use. My English is not that good so just bear with me. But you're trying to disconnect your remote control from your TV. There you go. Registration is the remote registration is disconnected. So now your remote registration is disconnected and in order to connect it back all you have to do is press the wheel button and it will register with the TV. So in case you're having any remote related issues, you can just press and hold the home button and back button and it will deregister the uh, remote control and then you can register the remote control. Sometimes it's a little finicky, it will dance around the menu and all. So you have to make sure you're holding both the buttons simultaneously. So press the home button and the back button and it will deregister the remote control and then you can register it by just pressing the wheel button in just one time and you have your remote issues solved. 
All right, guys, in this tip, I'm going to talk about how you can get the deep insights about your HDMI device, which is connected to your TV. So you can get the status like whether you have HDCP enabled or not, and you have the uh, what kind of FRL you're using, fixed rate link, or what bandwidth are you utilizing, and a lot of HDMI menu options. So we're going to go to the all settings for this, and we're going to head to the general and going to go down to the channels. So well, while you're at the channels, you have to be at the channel tuning and just start pressing one, 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 one. You believe you have to press it for five times and you have this uh, literature showing up on the screen. But there is one caveat to it. It's gonna just show you your TV model number, what RAM size you have for your TV and software information, whole bunch of stuff, right? But it's not gonna show you HDMI status because what we did, we were actually on the TV applications and we are looking at the HDMI status. So it's not gonna happen. So you have to switch to an HDMI input, let's say in my case, Apple TV. And in Apple TV now, when HDMI is activated and we have summoned that HDMI input, now if I go back to the settings and do this process again, by going to the settings in the general and then wanna go down to the um, channels and in the channels you want to stay here on the channels channel tuning and just spam one 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 and you're gonna have this literature again but now one thing is different you can see in the HDMI status now I have the source information that it is HDMI it is 4k 60 Hertz uh, what you can go more and you can get more information about the HDMI um, the video signal the audio signal the video link how, uh, what is the um, codec of that AVI information? You have the HDCP 2.2. So sometimes you have the HDMI, which is not doing the handshake. So you can get this information, whether the HDMI HDCP 2.2 is getting um, authentication or not. So you can see I have the HDMI HDCP 2.2 enabled and it's true. So you can see what's there depending on like what information do you need. I have the LG soundbar connected. So in audio, it shows me nine speakers, which is accurate. All right, now we're gonna go to the next step. You see how I have these applications here and there are so many out there, right? Some of them are pre-installed. Some of them are the ones that I installed. So I'm gonna show you how you can have the most frequently used ones going to the left side where you can access them easily. So I don't have the Sling TV installed, so I'm gonna install it because let's say it's the new app that you're installing, it's gonna be all the way on the right side. So when you're trying to access your applications, mostly you're gonna start from the left side. So now in order to get to the application, you have to go all the way down to the right side or you can use the cursor, but a lot of people just gonna scroll down, right? So we're gonna hit the home button and you can see most applications that I have used is YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, but now we just installed the sling, which is all the way to the right. So how are we gonna bring it to the other side? There are two ways. One is that you manually go and edit this application screen. So you can move applications manually, wherever you wanna move them around. Right now, why I'm opening it again and again, I'm just trying to repeat the process that you're gonna be doing. I'm making it a frequently used application. So I'm gonna open it and close it a couple of times. So the software is gonna think that this is something that I use frequently. So now I've opened it for quite a few times, right? So now I'm gonna go all the way down to the right side and we're gonna go to the edit app list. And when we are in there, you see that we have intelligent option if we apply, it's gonna bring all of those applications which I frequently used to the far left. And that way you will be able to use them. But I can also do it manually. Let's say I wanna move the art gallery, right? So I'm gonna just click on it with the wheel button and I can move it around wherever I want to. But this is the manual process, right? So why do the hard work? Let's just let the intelligent processor do it. And you just apply and you see how Sling application has moved further to the left. So this way now you can use your applications. You don't have to worry about where it is. You know, it's all the way to the right now. Okay. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about our last tip of the day and make sure to hit the like on this video if it is really helpful for you and consider subscribing on the channel because it's gonna help me a lot. All right, so now we have the final tip. As you can see, I turned on my TV and I have these applications showing up on the screen and also the advertisement about like trending now and some of the promotional stuff, right? So some people don't like it. So we're gonna go to the all settings and we're gonna disable this. So when we turn on the TV, we do not have this um, 
bar showing up with the application ad ad advertisement. So we're gonna go to the settings and we're gonna head down to the system and we're gonna go to the additional settings and in there we have the home settings because home related, right? So we're gonna be turning off the home auto launch because it auto launches when you turn on the TV and also the home promotion, which is the sponsored content advertisements from LG web OS. So we're gonna turn both of them off and now we're gonna turn off the TV and you will see that when I'll turn the TV back on, I will not have the um, application showing up on the screen. So this is the last tip that I wanted to share with you guys for the day. And uh, I hope it really helped you. And if it did, make sure to leave me a comment, leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel because it has been helping me a lot. And I'll be doing another giveaway in coming days. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in another video. Until then, peace out.